so the story goes right this is i'll give you an overview the story goes that there's this um there's a homeless guy on the street and i think it's in america right? a homeless guy on the street a couple pass this homeless dude in the street um no i think that, sorry there's a couple driving on the highway their car breaks down and they're just in those weird predicaments where they don't have any cash or any money on them i think their phones died or whatever maybe so as it wherever they crashed on the street wherever they um uh, pulled over and the petrol ran out a homeless dude happens to walk by and he gives them the last ten dollars he had or so ten dollars that he got from begging on the street they take that ten dollars they, they put their petrol in their car and they feel ever indebted to this homeless dude so this couple in their you know altruistic ways um decide to set up a gofundme page um in honor of this homeless dude that gave them the last bit of money that he had um in order to make sure that they got home safely Obviously, this GoFundMe goes viral because everyone on social media likes to prove how much of a good person they are by, you know, retweeting and sharing these fucking heart-wrenching stories instead of actually going out and doing um, good works in their community that they live in. But that's a topic for another day. It goes viral. They raise over $150,000 um, and everything goes well, right? That's the end of the story. You're wrong. So it transpired that the whole thing was a fucking lie, right? They all worked in. They all worked together, like the homeless dude and the couple, to try to kind of concoct this whole story. And um, it all it all unraveled only because they went on. It only unraveled because of the media appearances they started to do and the way they started to talk about the story. And people started to poke holes in it. Does that remind you of anything else? Jesse Smollett, right? It only started again. No, Jesse Smollett, not so much, right? Because I guess from the onset. A, a person like myself i wasn't one to go out and say it in social media but for the very moment i heard the story i thought it was fake right it just sounded too um um it just sounded too made up right the maga hat the news the bleach is like come on man there was just too many things too many trigger points um so i didn't i, I knew it was fake from the beginning but the story really unraveled for Justice Smollett when he went on Good Morning America, right? And he sat down and started talking to people like, mm, that's not something that someone does, right? If they go through a hate crime, right? It doesn't seem the, like the the natural progression of things. Um, again, that's the, that's just my opinion. But it all kind of unraveled once they decided to go into appearance and the whole story is just fucking crazy. And it also, what's crazy about it is that it unraveled when they went on a TV appearance and it also unraveled because the couple got greedy, Right? They didn't actually give the, the homeless dude who actually was homeless his fair share of the money. So from then on, the kind of he kind of obviously snitched and said, hey, where's my money? And the story kind of unraveled from there. Police investigated it. And now they're all facing jail time. So let's read the story. Right? It's fucking fascinating, right? Absolutely fascinating. The depths that people will go to nowadays to finesse. And again, does this, how much of a, how much of a bad person are you? Or can you say evil that you do this? That you'd prey on people's um, um, willingness to show how compassionate and how altruistic and how giving they are and kind of tap into this by doing this kind of scam. How bad of a person are you? And how much other things have you done in your life that also are equally as bad? Because this isn't a one-off thing. You don't just suddenly sit around. Imagine you and your girlfriend or you and your boyfriend sit around in a, in a house one day watching Netflix chilling. Right? And you're maybe, I don't know, you, you may be short of a couple of pounds because, you know, it's not payday yet, right? It's the middle of the month. You're both fucking poor. You've fucking made some pieces at home. You're just doing a couple shit. And then you realize, you know what? Instead of thinking about ideas of how you can make money and how your girlfriend might be able to sell cupcakes and you might be able to start that personal training thing that you want to always do, you both sit there and concoct this idea about making a fucking fake, um, uh, a fake go pum, go find me, go find me page in order to get money out of people. That is psycho shit, right? Because usually in a couple, there's usually one person that's the sane one. One person has a kind of the voice of reason, like, babe, shut the fuck up. What the fuck are you talking about? You're a psycho, right? But no, it seems like they're really in love and they're really a real couple because they both think the same way. Fucked up. Anyway, the story goes, right? This is on BBC News. Uh, Johnny Bobbitt, to, uh, to admit GoFundMe hoax about homeless men. A homeless man and a New Jersey woman have admitted um, concocting a hoax uh feel good story it definitely was feel good story that drew more than four hundred thousand in the gofundme donation now you know what i'm thinking about a hoax right this brings me to the attention of things that i i don't like watching anymore there was a point where i stopped watching american idol britain's got talent x Factor, all those kind of programs because i started to feel as if like again it, it could be the producer's fault it couldn't be the fault it might not be the fault of the actual people that sing on the program but i got the feeling that whenever the the sub story came around that some people would concoct a sub story in order to kind of elicit some emotion, in order to have that emotion be a driving force into them delivering a really spectacular performance, right? Like that performance where everyone's kind of standing up and like, oh, 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 
<laughs> the crying and the clapping, which I don't know how people do, right? I don't know how you can cry and clap at the same time. It's probably like sneezing and singing at the same time, right? It sounds really unlikely people would do it. And it always felt like they was forcing it, right? And it reminded me of a time when I was in school where they made us like, um, I don't know what, it, it, do you remember that time when you're in primary school and they do this some thing where they like, they ask you to tell a sad story about yourself and people start crying and shit. The kids start crying. I remember being such a fucking psychopath in school, right? <laughs> ah! Oh, it's embarrassing even saying it. I'm crying. I remember being such a psychopath in school that someone was telling some fucking sad story about something. Um, I don't know what it was about their dog dying or something. No, sorry about a family member dying. And I said something about a dog. I don't have a dog, right? African people don't have dogs, right? We don't fucking have dogs. Um, we, we never had a dog. And I remember going to, to, to talk in front of the school in front of the classroom, sorry, and I made some story about my dog dying. Well, I didn't have a dog. They had the ambulance came and they took the dog away and I don't know, do, do ambulance comes for dogs? I don't know. I have no idea. Right? And I just started crying. Everyone was like crying in the classroom and I felt really good. Right? I felt amazing that suddenly I was crying about something that didn't happen and I suddenly had a sympathy of all my classmates and we all could burn around as like, you know, the people that lost something, Right? And there's something to be said about that, right? There's something to be said about that Justice Smollett case, right? You know, the whole victimhood thing. There's something gratifying about this whole climate area now where everyone's a victim, everyone's suffered from some kind of oppression. Wherever you wherever you cut your intersectional lines, right? Somebody is an oppressor and has been oppressed, right? In regards to your race, colour or creed. So because of that, everyone wants to take part. But hey, I have some, something went fucked up in my life too. Can, can I get some sympathy? And I felt that at the time, right? And it's a fucking disgusting feeling to think, to feel of it now. To think of it now is, makes me feel, ugh, I feel disgusting and yucky, but it makes sense nowadays, especially where everyone's a victim and everyone is getting a platform to speak and you get a book deal and you get press coverage and you might release a podcast and you might become an activist or some of the people um, have uh, someone that people run to. You might get a blue, a blue check on social, which is fucking, you know, um, priceless. There are things that come with it that would obviously make you think you know what a lot of these stories out there might be hoaxes and that's why i think sometimes when i see american idol and x factors like are all these people going through fucked up shit it's everyone that sings going through some sort of turmoil or some sort of anguish that they have to get on the microphone and sing their heart out i don't think so i don't think so anyway let's continue the story u.s military veteran john johnny bobbitt uh, pleaded guilty in a court to conspiring to counterfeit money laundering and Caitlin McClure, 28, admitted her wire fraud. They claim Bobbitt gave McClure in his last 20... Um, also, Bobbitt... Oh, that's, that's even sadder. So, Bobbitt, the homeless guy, is a fucking... is a US veteran. Why do veterans always end up homeless, man? What the fuck is happening here? Um, they claim that Bobbitt gave McClure in his last $20 when, he's, when, he's, when, he, when, he, when her car ran out of petrol in Philadelphia in November 2017. Uh, more than one fourteen thousand people from across the world donated money. Um, the bogus Good Samaritan story was posted by McClure and her then boyfriend, also not together anymore, Mark D'Amico. Bobbitt McClure and D'Amico still face additional charges of theft by deception and conspiracy to commit theft. I wonder what GoFundMe are doing on their end because I guess again I wouldn't say it happens a lot, but it must be something they must be analysing, right? The GoFundMe team, like how they can prevent these cases from happening, how they can maybe investigate it in house because. Uh, come on, like, but then again, yeah, these startups, man, I get, I bet they're all happy, clappy, and GoFundMe, right? They'll believe anything that comes around their way. Um, but there has to be a, a department within GoFundMe that can actually sit through campaigns and see if that's this sounds like fucking bullshit, right? And call it to task or maybe ask the person for more evidence. But then again, I guess in this world, if you call if you call someone's story bullshit and you ask for more evidence, they could end, they could. It um potentially end you right post screenshots. Oh, I did. They didn't believe my story. No one believes my pain. Da, 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 da. Believe just listen. All this sort of nonsense. Anyway, it continues. Um, da, 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 da. the couple had become acquainted with Bobby about a month before the hoax during their trips to a casino. Of course, people that go to a casino would want to contact this. The story melted hearts around the world, but began to unravel once the trio began media appearances, gushing about the outpouring of online support for Bobbitt. McLaren sent a text message to a friend and launched the story was completely made up. Of course, you do that, right? Because you're, you're a dummy. I can, oh, people, man. Instead of using the money to help Bobbitt, officials say the couple spent it on a BMW, New Year's Eve trip, trip to LA, uh, to Las Vegas, sorry, Vis Disney World, and designer handbags. Well, they deserve to get caught then, right? This is what happens. When you're, that's what I'm saying. If you if you investigate that couple and you dig into their past, I bet they've had loads of schemes they've done before that haven't worked out where they try to fuck people over. You don't, um, you don't do a scam, right? You don't try and, you don't concoct a finesse with someone and then when you get the money, 
cut those, cut that person out because you're all you're all part of it. And that person is owed that money. And if they're not going to get the money, they're just going to snitch on everyone. That's a standard thing, right? If I can't get the money, I'm just going to snitch. And that's a really scumbag thing to do, right? There has to be some honor amongst thieves. But she's only three of you. It's like, fuck, just give him a bit of the money. Like, what's wrong with these people, man? So greedy. Um, uh, the couple allegedly withdrew $85,000 at a casino in Las Vegas, Atlantic City, and a Philadelphia suburb. Bobby, a homeless drug addict, later sued the couple, saying he did not get his fair share of the donations. <sighs> a homeless drug addict, ex veteran. It's just a fucking, only in America, man. It's amazing. Um, he said he only received $75,000 only, right? He, I bet he ran through that in a fucking instant. He could an 18000 trailer bought for him and parked at the couple's home. Now that's fucking taking the piss. They bought him a trailer and they parked at their own house. Yeah, we bought your trailers here man use it whenever you want <laughs> use it whenever you want the lawsuit spurred prosecutors to take a closer look led to criminal criminal charges oh okay so i guess the guy suing them because they didn't pay him his equal share kind of threw the officials for a loop like hey what the fuck's going on over there and of course they, when they uncovered it they feel oh. mcclure is facing very three months in prison while Bobbitt, the ex veteran is flu is facing um custodial term between six to 30 months uh, according to Philadelphia Inquirer, Bobbitt will learn his sentence later this week from a court which allows addicts to receive rehabilitation rather than criminal sentence. That's fucking awesome. Um, Mark D'Amico is also facing in charge of criminal t- trespass after McClure's family accused him of refusing to leave the home they shared uh, after their romantic breakup last. So they obviously, everyone broke up. They The couple broke up. The homeless guy didn't get his money or his trailer. Absolute catastrophe of a situation, but again, that's a that's a horrible finesse, right? Imagine you you're in it together and then you get scammed out of it at the end. Uh, I hope the veteran gets his rehab and he gets the help he gets, but the couple can go can go and get buried under a prison, man. Absolute scumbags.